All right, Dennis Kappel here with the How To Series. This particular horse has been ridden a lot, and he's competed at very high levels at jumping. And and what he had learned how to do in the heat of competition was to hollow out his back, stick his nose up, and and avoid listening to the rider. So one way of how to remedy a situation like that is, is by using split reins. Uh, uh, this wouldn't be my first thing to do, but this is a way of helping a horse to find out how to come off of that bit and let them find out how to do it on their own. So I'll take these reins and put them between his legs and up to the saddle. And go around the other side. Okay. Now, the tension that I tie these off with is going to depend on where this horse stands comfortably. Right here, just like this. You get his head up. Got his nose out a little bit. The bit in his mouth is not a collapsible snaffle. It is a it is a a bit that will not collapse around his jaw, so it's a more of a straight mouthpiece. I, I think that you know is helpful to avoid putting that jaw in that bind if he does raise his head up. Now the the tension that I've got him tied with when he's standing there not not lifting his head up at all they're slacking those reins, so I'm not holding his head down with them. I, I don't want my horse to get in the habit of sticking his head down. If you do this, this exercise too long without being there with them, what you'll end up with is a horse that's just dropping his head right here from the saddle forward, and I, that's not what I'm after. <laughs> what I'm after here is when this horse if he decides to stick his nose up and hollow out, I want this, this bridle ring to be there to, to show him, look, this is not a way out. This is not, this is not the right answer. That's all, we're, that's all we're after here with this. So what makes this work is not just putting the, the bridle on in this way. It's not the bridle. It's not how I've got it tied up. It is the forward motion that is going to accompany being in this situation and then is the most important factor here is the human influence standing out there providing the forward motion and watching to see when is this horse in agreement when is this horse quit testing this piece of equipment when has he learned how to put slack in there and keep slack in there what i'm looking for when i have this on is for the horse to raise his neck up to about here and then in the middle of his neck to start to soften and then to soften at the pole so that he's going to come up and bring his chin back in and this will get him in a position where he can come from behind and pick these withers up and get get off of his front end then this this rain configuration will have successfully helped me to uh, uh, accomplish the task that I'm after by doing this. Thank you. Okay, I'm out here at my uh, what I call the circus pole, and I've I've got a, a rope here that I have uh, tied a bowling knot in a big heavy snap, and I've got enough length to the hondo so that that it will hook in to this right right here, and this is going to go around the horse's neck because of this bowling knot that will not come tight so it won't it won't come tight and choke the horse so what i do with this is i i've got my bridle fixed up ready for this work i'm going to go between 
the bit hobble and the horse. Like that, see? Where this, the part that's gonna be used out here can, can work off of either side then, see? And then I'll come up over the neck, around, and open that big snap right there, and let it, let it rest right there. So it, it sits comfortably underneath there, and the horse doesn't have any uh, Ill, Ill effect from the rope itself. Then, I've got it attached to this end of the, the lariat. And I'm gonna unwind it so that it's not twisted between me and the horse. out there where I'm going to be working to not be twisted and this, this, this end of the lariat was twisted so I just got all the kinks out of the lariat and then we're ready to come out and utilize this circus pole.